So welcome to an introduction to reflective practice. This is the first um, like e-learning platform for uh, Climbing Coaches UK. Um, what we're going to do about is talk about reflective practice. The reason I made this the first is that with all of um, the online courses that we're hoping to provide, the ability to reflect on what we've learnt um, is paramount to moving forward within coaching. So. One of the things you're going to have to do as part of the thing is to, to sort of write down what reflective practice is. So, you know, think to yourself, what does reflective, reflective practice mean to you now? And just jot it down on a piece of paper. Um, and the reason that we want you to do that is uh, we want to see that you had an understanding and hopefully it's moved on a little bit with this little PowerPoint. Um, one way to look at it is, you know, it is what we do, why we do it and how we do it. And the constant interaction of asking, you know, what am I going to do with this client? Why am I going to do it? And how am I going to do it? Or, or where am I going to go? And why am I going there? Um, what is it I specifically want to do? What is it that the client wants to do? And can we meet somewhere in the middle? Um, you know, often f reflective practice for a lot of people is what went wrong, why it went wrong, and how we can avoid it in the future. Uh, and all these different ways round this kind of triangle are often brought about by different incidents that happens or, or different ways that we are utilising reflective practice. So why is it important to use reflective practice? You know, why might reflecting on both good and bad things help us as a coach? And again, we want you to write down some stuff when it comes to the sort of like the more written assessment based bit of this course. So again, if you jot them down on a piece of paper, it'll help you out in the long run in terms of you will have uh, some answers to go by. Um, there is really no right or wrong answer. Um, these come from uh, what would be more a clinical base. So like sports psychologists have kind of come up with some reasons why like all professionals need the opportunity to grow and develop. All professionals want to improve. All professionals have the ability to learn. All professionals have the ability to take control of their own growth and development and people that need and want information about their own performance. And, and hopefully one of the things that we can promote through Climbing Coaches UK is the fact that we are professionals and we want to grow, we want to de develop and we want to improve. And this is really the starting block of this So the next question would be, well, when do you reflect? When, when do we reflect? Now, again, this is one of those things that is, is very specific to you. You might reflect, you know, in the morning before you meet your clients. You might reflect at lunchtime. You might reflect after each little mini session. You might reflect at the end of the day. It might be after a ba bad incident. It might only be when the weather's bad. Um, Whatever the answer is, whether it's a negative session, specific problems, after the session, during a session, or when you need an answer to a question, or you've got some new information, all of these are good times to reflect. When should we reflect rather than when do we reflect? You know, do are we doing it routinely? Are we doing it after every session rather than most sessions you know should we be doing it after every new session we deliver you know if you've delivered you know a million taster sessions at an indoor climbing wall to school kids that's great but what happens if you've done that one session where you've dealt with specifically i don't know autistic children or adults on a skills development course you know that's the time to reflect you know maybe you've learned something new with friends at a crag in a formal com setting like this 
um, you know, that maybe you've got more answers than I haven't. So one of the things uh, that affects our practice is the student. Now, as climbing coaching coaches is about coaching, we really like to promote the concept of a student-centered or sort of like group-centered learning. And so at the center of all our decisions should be what the student or the group want to learn, you know, who they are, how many they are, what their skill level is. And then we have to take into sort of consideration their aim, the weather that we've got, and you know, as a result of the group, the aim and the weather, we then can come around to the, the terrain that we take them to, you know, that literally can mean choosing a different crag, and finally the tasks that we're going to set, you know, and those tasks might change during the day with the weather, so might the terrain, you might choose an easier climb, and you know, when it comes to teaching, it's, you know, it's almost more linear than this, you know, who have I got as a student, what is their aim, what's the weather doing, where can I take them, and what can I do with them to re reach those aims. And that is just one of the, one of the ways to look at what affects our practice. There are other things that affect our teaching practice. There are things like social norms. What am I expected to do? You know, you might have, um, might work in a very popular area where you're expected to work and behave in a specific way to kind of like, you know, you're one of the sheep really. You don't want to stand out by doing something radically different. You know, what do you want your students to take away? You know, do you want them to take away, uh, the fact that they want to have screw gates on every belay, or do you want them to go away with a more climbing perspective rather than this instructor perspective of, you know, actually, if you're making a belay and you've got it tight and you are on snap gates, well, maybe that's okay, but, you know, can, are they at a level to distinguish between the two? You know, do you have some prejudice, you know, do, why, why I personally don't teach the bowline? But, I, you know, I still use it, but I wouldn't teach it. Um, do you have experiences that you call on the, the what I would call the the 95 percent? You know, this method works night on 95 percent of the time on 95 percent of the people. So, you know, I'm going to call on that one first before I dig deeper into my skills. Um, how we react to a learner in a situation can be um, can affect us, you know, if that learner isn't isn't how we have read them and they start doing something a little bit um, out untoward, do you, do you react to it? And if you react to it, how do they counter react to it? And I think this is an important thing that um, a lot of us forget is that if we react in a certain way to our clients, we are going to make them react in a, in a way as well. So it's a very hard bit, this kind of human side. You know, is there ethical knowledge? You know, why don't we use campus boards anymore when coaching young people? Because we know it hurts their fingers. And so all of these things, along with personal knowledge, you know, this, this almost comes into this aesthetic knowledge. And before we know, how I react to a learner, it, it's understanding who you are and why you react that you do. And, and before you can, you know, work on their reaction, it's better to know, know yourself. And the last one is, what science is there that underpins what you're teaching and, and even how you're teaching it? Um, and, and all of these different things will affect how we teach. And so, in effect, what we can do is sometimes maybe just reflect on one of these rather than how the session went, you know, what what experiences did I take in or take away? Um, did I react to a student 
and why I, why did I do it? You know, have these kind of more emotional things um, rather than the nuts and bolts. So far, not finally. Uh, so what can we gain from reflection? So again, the, uh, there's this concept that we can gain knowledge that is either technical, practical or critical. And that technical knowledge is about coaching in a more technical role. It's, you know, your personal competency. You know, can you actually perform a rock over in a textbook fashion? Can you demonstrate the knots in a, in a really clinical way? You know, they are really the standards you meet to carry out that role. You know, if you're coaching somebody that climbs, you know, near to your level or above your level, have you got the actual skills to, to do the, the job required? If you like, it's those mechanical aspects of coaching. You know, so back to that, that person who climbs harder than you, you know, if you have a, a really good knowledge in climbing movement and you can coach those more complex movement, then, then you're probably gonna be okay at teaching somebody harder than you. But if you haven't, then maybe, maybe not you know similarly you know if you are developing uh, or delivering a goal setting session based on on best practice you know was it best practice did you go to the literature what are the latest ideas in goal setting so the practical knowledge this is ex aimed at how you perceive that situation or personally this is this is your feelings um, those preconceptions you might have about a student or a, a client uh, or methods of teaching um, and it's that thing of how they how you affect your client and how your client affects you and you know are you going to be stuck in a vicious circle these are what we call soft or or people skilled and, and they're something that uh, we want to start developing more tools to help um, coaches and instructors work on these you know people skills you know it this knowledge is about asking yourself why you reacted in that situation with that client on that day and finally the critical knowledge that's exploring the routines that we get into and the actions that we carry out it's about readdressing habit you know habit is often a, a good thing because we've gone to it because it works that 95% of the time but what happens when you you get that person that falls into that 5% of people that it doesn't work with you know it's about being able to think outside that normal bubble you know and sometimes it's about not just you but the organization that you work for you know does your organization have a policy that you have to work within and, and and if is that easy to work inside or is that hard you know so there are many different models and you know for this stage where we you know this is an introduction I really just want you to understand that there are models that we can use to reflect but essentially they're all it's all about questioning so this six stage model is you know and it's really only for maybe when an incident happens or there is a learning experience that you really want to focus on. On And it's about describing what happens during the session. You know, what were, your, what were you thinking and your feeling during the session? Were you thinking it was working? Were you feeling it was working? Did you think that it was going badly? At what point did you think it was going badly? How, what had happened just before that point? You know, where were the good points? Where were the not so good points in the session? You know, it probably wasn't all bad. It might be one small thing that led to a breakdown in that session. You know, what could you do to avoid it? You know, where once you've gone through this, you know, where was the mistake? Where was the, where was the 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 bit of gold dust that you you threw in that that happened to work that time you know it works either way you know 
how could you have done it differently? What could you have done in the session to make it even better, to, you know, to make it not bad? And then, you know, that what if I have a session like this again? What am I going to do differently next, next time? How am I going to remember to do it? You know, and this is this is something that I don't think we should be doing this routinely, but this is something that, you know, if you have a really good session or a really bad session, it's something that will help you think about it. So part of reflective practice for me is is a lot more small and subtle, and it's about the small subtle ways we can change our practice and so it's what questions we can use to help us reflect you know questions after we've been personal climbing if you're developing as a climbing instructor or even if you're a qualified one you know I go climbing all the time and you know I'll do routes and I'll be like well that was a really good client route or that was a rubbish one or this is a really good place to bring somebody because you know this route really works for this you know what about after a coaching session or after I've been working you know how did that person seem to do how how do I know that they did okay what what did I you know did I ask them questions did I do the follow-up um the other one is you know that questions after you've had some continuing professional development or or after this some some e-learning and hopefully what we're going to do with our courses is when you do this e-learning stuff, it's all about going into your logbooks and and actually writing down some reflection on what you're learning to show that it's gone in. It, you know, and I, I'd much prefer one sentence of, you know, I went climbing at the weekend and I did these three routes and two of them were, were great for for taking a client up, I'm not too sure I would have them lead because that's a little bit run out. You know, that's brilliant. That is really good kind of reflection on on your personal climbing that you can take into your coaching life. You know, I'd much prefer that than you did like a whole six stage reflection from one from one actual coaching session rather than, you know, one or two sentences after every one is much better because you'll learn every time. 